Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, it is I am the one and only, Ray the Flying Squirrel here, and I am Mighty the Armadillo here, welcome you all back for the likes of the Maxi Toys videos once again. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for some more of Let's Play of Super Mario Advance 4, Super Mario Bros. 3 for the Game Boy Advance. I told you this Let's Play is not over yet, I must be quite frank for this point. Because of this though, last time we've essentially did somehow managed to complete World 8, and on top of that, Mighty is the only one who who managed to rescue Princess Peach for reals now. And on top of all that stuff though, we also showcase off the three uh, warp whistles that we somehow managed to come across into. And that's pretty much about it, basically. So as a result, yeah, relatively speaking though, that's as far as I can say about the forms within the last video, because it's been like two days ago since we've actually got to that point. So today, for this video, it's about the fact that we're about to get into the most exciting parts, journey forms of the conclusion parts, in terms of the forms of Super Mario Advance 4, Super Mario Bros. 3. Now, of course, today for this video is that we're going to be hit on to World E, or should I say, Level Card. So because of that though, relatively speaking though, it's about the fact that we might come across into something new for us, because obviously this is our first time experiencing this particular world honestly, because obviously if you ever owned the European cartridge version of Super Mario Advance 4, Super Mario Bros. 3, as I mentioned this before, the world E does not exist in the European version, because obviously this particular world right there is actually pretty small looking, because aside from the fact that you come across into, I would say like a cat castle segment or something like that, and there's also not one, not two, but three different colored toad houses. One is red, one is yellow, and the other one is blue, which we'll explain more details about that as soon as we're able to get started with the forms of World E. And also I just realized about the fact that we can able to have the ability to able to switch between Mario and Luigi from the get-go, rather than just trying to able to take turns and stuff like that, unlike the main adventure mode in Super Mario Bros. 3. So you can able to actually switch between Mario and Luigi on the fly during the forms of the world map, which I think is actually pretty cool. Which, that was before when Super Mario Galaxy 2 did the same thing as well, and so applies with Super Mario 3D Land as well. So relatively speaking, now enough about that specific distractions, and relatively speaking, I just love the fact that in World E, it does manage to have a shape like an E, because obviously, you know, this is World E after all. So, as you can tell about the fact that in order to able to play the E-Reader levels, is that you guys even remember about the accessory called the E-Reader for the Game Boy Bonds? Well, it only came out in North America, if I recall correctly, and I believe same applies to the Japanese market as well. Although, unfortunately, as I said before, the European version does not have an E-Reader. But, luckily, if you do manage to get yourselves the Wii U Virtual Console re-release before the actual closure, and if you do manage to be able to actually access to the Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Pack, basically, that was a great way you can able to actually experience World E for the first time. So, as you can see, we actually come across into some familiar levels, in addition to some brand new levels we can able to come across into. Like, some of them are pretty easy to manage, and some of them are actually going to be quite a challenge, I must be quite frank. And on top of that, similar to the forms of how it does it not only for the likes of Super Mario 3D Land, but also say it plays with the forms of maybe Super Mario Events 2, Super Mario World, if I'm assuming so anyway. Although, we'll get to those particular games at some point, probably until 2024. But either way, so as you can tell, I'm now going to be taking control of Mario, because last time I actually take control of Luigi, during the forms of the main Super Mario Bros. 3 game, so we figure we're most able to do a bit of a switcheroo and what have you. So as you can see, the first level we're going to be diving right into is something you might be familiar with, and that's what appears to be Classic World 1-1 based off from Super Mario Bros. Although, except the fact that matter is, though, the background is actually based off from Super Mario Bros. 3, after all. But in terms of the level design, yeah, it's basically it is exactly the same as new forms of the original Super Mario Bros. with updated visuals alike. And on top of that, we actually come across into one of those special collectibles in this particular world, E, and that's what appears to be known as Advanced Ki Coins. And basically, though, it's about the fact that, as you can tell, I've already collected one during the forms of the first level in World E, and check this out, if you finish the level like this, 
Basically, Mario or Luigi can able to perform a front somersault, which is actually pretty cool uh, victory fan fair, at least as far as I'm concerned. So either way though, now it's your turn mighty to take on, well, as far as for this particular progression thing for this point, I believe we're about to able to do the level twice, because as you can see, since I've completed a level with Mario, so now it's uh, mighty's turn to able to take control of Luigi, so that way he can able to actually clear any levels with Luigi, and I can definitely tell you right off the bat though is about the fact that Luigi's moveset is actually a lot differently compared to the forms of how it does on the regular Super Mario Bros. 3 game because as you can see Luigi can jump higher and on top of that he does have a slippery traction so because of that though which kind of throws him off a little bit well for Mighty's case anyway because he's sort of used to like you know the normal gameplay style for the likes of Mario and Luigi because they both played exactly the same as each other during the forms of the regular Super Mario Bros. 3 game but that takes a while to get used to as far as this is concerned so and also if you manage to able to go on top of the flagpole as you can see we actually come across into well some score points but then if you go all the way up to the top you get yourselves a glorious extra life which that was before when new Super Mario Bros games exist so, yeah, kind of think about it, it's about the fact that those advanced coins, although before I get to more details about that, you're still able to come across into the inventory items here and there, but in order to able to get those free items this time, is that, well, for certain stages anyway, that you must able to actually just to complete certain stages and stuff like that. Well, again, mind you, this is our first time experiencing World E, just... Be curious to see how that world's gonna turn out to be. So, either way, so as you can see, the next level we're gonna be diving right into is Classic World 1 2, based off from the underground stage from also from Super Mario Bros. So, pretty cool to be able to have certain Super Mario Bros. Uh, levels be remade during the forms of on the Game Boy Advance version of Super Mario Bros. 3, alongside with the Super Mario Bros. 3's physics and momentum. So, as you can tell, because obviously we can no longer try to deal with the forms of locked screen and stuff like that if you go all the way to the right and then you can't go back to the left you remember back in the old days actually i might be curious to see what's over there although mind you this is used to be the warp zone from the likes of super mario Bros. the original but if i go into any of those pipes basically it allows me to give me one of those items so in some cases i've built myself a fire flower and by the way something's worth noting for we all share lives so because of that though for instance, Mighty's now going to be dealing with World 1-2 as well, but except this time he's now going to be able to actually try to find not only a singular advanced coin, but it's also about the fact that he will try to able to complete the level as Luigi. So because of that, I'm not exactly sure how long this world is going to take though, but either way though, wish us luck because obviously this is our first time experiencing this world. And I'm, well, have to be honest here, I'm actually really looking forward to this, especially concerning about the fact that, well, relatively speaking though, just it might take a bit of while to get used to with, uh, you know, the regular Super Mario Bros. world, or the the levels, I should say, within the Super Mario Bros. 3's uh, momentum and physics and all that stuff. And by the way, something's worth noting for, if you do manage to able to obtain the advanced coin, as you can see, basically you get yourselves extra lives. And because of that, though, since that we've already got one of those advanced coins during the forms of not only in World 1-1, but also with World 1-2, thanks to Mighty, did somehow manage to able to obtain it for us. And because of that, though, we got ourselves some extra lives for this point. However, though, in certain stages, might actually get ourselves not only either one uh, advanced coin, but also with two advanced coins and vice versa. And you are so close to get ourselves the forms of the, the five one-ups with the three Starman cards. Oh yeah, I just realized about that. Yeah, because here's the thing though, because your jumps are now even floatier, thanks to the forms of Luigi's playstyle, just feels a bit extremely different compared to the forms of the regular you know, Super Mario Bros. 3 game. So, either way, speaking of which, though, let's move on to World 1-3. You might be too familiar with that particular level uh, environment and also the design itself. Whilst, thankfully, the actual momentum is nowhere near as stiff as the forms of how it does it in the, uh, well, the original Super Mario Bros. So, what that was a little bit weird is that the music in the background is actually based off from Super Mario All-Stars version of Super Mario Bros. Despite the fact that we never actually got ourselves the the Game Boy Advance version, or technically speaking, we do have the NES version of the original Super Mario Bros., but it's more accurately like a port to the game. 
Although, we never actually got ourselves the Super Nintendo version of the Game Boy Advance version of the original Super Mario Brothers, because I'm not exactly sure how that's going to be represented with. But it does, uh, technically, journey forms of Super Mario Brothers Deluxe for the Game Boy Color, so the, at the very least, we do technically get a remake of Super Mario Brothers, but on the Game Boy Color, with worst screen crunch in any existence. So, either way, though, that might be saying something, so... So yeah, you can definitely know why for this point, guys, that this is a perfect example of why that this is our favorite uh, Super Mario Advance game we've ever played at this point. Because obviously with the introdu introduction to the forms of uh, not only World E, but also some familiar power-ups might be in here. Or do you really think so for this point, my team? Because again, first time experience in this particular world so far. And so far, I'm actually very impressed of how this world actually offers us to. So, anyway, so now we're done with that, so now let's move on to Classic World 1-4. In some cases, a Bowser Castle level. So, in some cases, though, yeah, that, that music sounds familiar, because it's obviously based off from the Super Mario All-Stars version of that theme. And on top of all that stuff, though, I think something tells me that the actual sprite of Bowser might be unchanged. Because obviously, as you can see, it's still pretty much the Super Mario Bros. 3 Bowser. So, although the biggest difference is now, is that he tosses hammers. So because of that, as always, if you pick up a axe, then obviously the level ends. And instead of able to grant ourselves with Toad, we actually get ourselves not only a power-up, but also an advanced coin. So, pretty swell, I might add. So, and I believe something tells me there are a grand total of like 147 of those advanced coins. Yeah, as you can clearly tell about the forms of the checklist. Oh, darn it, I hate the ceiling. Well, that's our first death of the forms of World E, so... Kind of a excellent start, I guess. Considering about the fact that, well, relatively speaking, it's just the beginning portion of, uh, you know, World E so far, so... But, uh, yeah, something's worth noting for is about the fact that, well, today's day is, of course, the 15th of November today, in this case, in 2023 today, and unfortunately I've died again because of that unpredictable fireball to somehow come out of nowhere. Well, I guess it's your third attempt for doing this level, despite the fact that we need to be very careful of our lives at the moment, because like I said before, we do share lives. So, it feels very similar to the forms of how it does it in not only for the likes of Super Mario 3D World, but it's also the same applies with Sonic 06 as well, when it comes to multiplayer and co-op thing alike. So, yeah, it just takes a bit of time to get used to with the actual Luigi's momentum or physics in mind. So. And there we go, that pretty much does it for World 1-4, so of course he will get himself another power-up from that particular chest. And it's once again the frog suit, so I believe something tells me we do have uh, two of those frog suits, didn't we? Well, I don't know about you, because obviously we didn't exactly pay attention to the item inventory uh, system in this world. Although, relatively speaking, I'm about to be hitting off onto, let's just say, the final classic level before we move on to brand new levels that is exclusive to the e-reader. That's what appears to be by the forms of Classic World 2-2, because obviously that we can never forget about the forms of the underwater level, because, well, without one, then obviously it will be kind of like disappointment, I guess, without one. And something tells me that theme is also based off from Super Mario All-Stars, so as a result, still sounds very, very weird though, because I'm pretty much used to with the Super Nintendo, uh, uh, version of that particular music in mind. Well, mind you about the fact that it's been, again, uh, two days ago since we've actually last played this game, because obviously after the events of, uh, World 8, and we decided able to take a break for quite a few days, but still, it will be uploaded in journey forms of not only on Mondays, but also with uh, Wednesdays and Fridays, essentially. So, either way, so, either way, I'm actually out of the underwater, and of course, just like always, the piranha plant always pops up every time when if you do manage to able to continue things on, journey forms of certain levels by the end anyway, so... But at the very least, we got ourselves an extra life back after your two deaths so far during the forms of, you know, the actual castle level, or technically speaking, classic World 1-4. So, either way, 
And something tells me you're gonna be using the frog suit because the frog suit is gonna be a godsend in this level because obviously it makes swimming a lot more easier to manage. So I can totally see why you're gonna be using that, Mighty. Yeah, exactly, for sure, eh? Especially concerning about the fact that, well, I don't know if I can able to actually keep that power up forever, though, because there might be a couple of times that in the future levels to come in uh, World E that uh, it might not be suited for it, so... Oh yeah, in addition to that particular topic though, is about the fact that we're well, relatively speaking, that uh, we actually almost at the halfway point in terms of the forms of November before we move on to the final month in terms of 2023, that's of course, as always, December. So because of that though, gee, I kind of believe it's, it's actually getting ridiculously close towards the end of that particular moment. So either way. And this is actually the final time we're going to be seeing that flagpole, because as soon as we get into a brand new levels, well, I don't think we can probably be able to see a flagpole anytime soon. So, either way, wild, wild ride in the sky. So I found a little bit of a tongue twisting in the end, folks, because I know for a fact that, well, this is all new to me, so either way, though, chances are, oh no, it's an auto-scrolling level, isn't it? And as you can see, that the advanced coins, as you can see, from that outline on the top left corner, it actually tells you how many advanced coins you'll come across into for certain stages. Like, for instance, we're going to be hit into Wild Ride in the Sky level. Basically, we need to now need to get about four advanced coins, so relatively speaking though, in order to able to 100% everything in World E, is that you're going to able to memorize the forms of the advanced coins locations. Now on top of that, you need to beat every level with Mario and Luigi, you know, just like the forms of Mario does in Super Mario 3D Land. Although, it, it doesn't really matter if you try to do this particular point, because, well, unlike any forms of Mario does it on Super Mario 3D Land, that you have to do it. Whilst in this game, it really doesn't matter of which specific characters you're going to be completing certain levels with. But honestly, though, we're just going to have to able to stick around for it, I guess. So... And I'm almost going to die right there, because I'll be saying about the fact that with all that... Screen scrolling just might confuse me a little bit, but either way, though, that might be saying something. Oh god! Some barrage of bullet bills just somehow just goes in diagonal shots. But I'm sure we'll try to able to avoid those, just to ensure. Oh jeez, that was close. Now, of course, you're still able to actually come across into ourselves the, uh, the panels or cards, more like. So just to ensure that you will be able to actually get yourself some more extra lives. If you manage to able to actually be lucky enough, if your timing jumps or what have you. So, either way, but I should also mention about this as well, is about the fact that, oh jeez, that was also a close one. Especially because if I dare fall off, then much like the forms of Harry Dustin on a regular, Super Mario Bros. 3 levels, there aren't any checkpoints to be found. So, yeah, that might be some consumption. So, either way, and something tells me you're about to be able to do this level as well. So, either way, though, I wish you luck, Mighty, because you definitely need it, especially since there you still got yourselves your frog suit power-up, then you do need to able to replace one of those power-ups, so... Oh, and by the way, something tells me about the fact that if you dare miss any of those advanced coins, well, I believe something tells me we do need to able to grab them within a singular run-through, because in order to able to actually complete, you know, the entire level 100%, is that you need to be able to get every single advanced coins all in one go. So because of that though, if you dare die, and chances are if you miss any of those advanced coins, then obviously you need to try again and just hope for luck, I guess. But that doesn't stop there on the other hand though, right? Because there's also a technically another collectible in this game as well. Well, to be more specifically in World E in some cases, though. Oh yes, because there is actually a circular coin shape that we will come across into eventually, so either way. But, uh, relatively speaking, this is not the introduction to the forms of the advanced coins, because that only goes to the forms of, uh, let's just say Super Mario Advance 1, Super Mario Bros. 2, is the first game to able to actually introduce to the likes of advanced coins, because get it, because it was on the Game Boy Advance to begin with, so, either way, though, that might be saying something, so... And I'm just gonna able to actually ignore that advanced coin, because since then we've already completed everything on this particular level, so either way, though, I'm just gonna get myself an extra life, so that'll lead us to, so far, 23. Yep, 23. So, either way, though, that might be... a sight, I guess. Alright, so now it's my turn to do... 
sliding these slopes. Hmm, this seems interesting. And I believe this level is going to be a huge emphasis on slitting onto slopes, if I'm assuming so anyway. So, either way, let's just grab that particular advanced coin right here, and time our jump with that particular note block, and try to get into another area we can able to explore through. And, exponentially, uh, what is all this? Um, okay, um, oh, these things are from the likes of Super Mario World. That's actually pretty interesting. I believe something tells me with those flippers, gates, I think those are usually based off from the likes of Yoshi's Island as well. So yeah, relatively speaking, what makes World E super unique is about the fact that you will come across into some references for the likes of the other Mario games. Like, for instance, we've already come across into certain objects based off from not only from Yoshi's Island, but also with Super Mario World as well. So yeah, that's actually super dope and everything whenever you see this in action. Especially concerning about the fact that we're relatively be speaking of that since this is the fourth entry in the series when it comes to the Super Mario Bands games, which I still find is a bit odd about the fact that they put Super Mario uh, Super Mario Brothers 3 for last as opposed to the likes of Super Mario World because as far as I'm aware, maybe potentially about the fact that well, it's a bit tricky to be able to explain things clearly, but I do already know from one thing in mind is that until specifically next week that uh, we're going to be having ourselves multiple celebrations during that time. Like, for instance, we're about to be able to celebrate for next week about the fact that we're about to celebrate the 10-year anniversary of the release of not only... Oh, that's actually pretty cool with all that uh, E+, plus with all that coins and stuff like that, which it does kind of reminds me of the forms of you are a super player message. Journey forms have been Super Mario World, which is actually pretty cool. And now it's my time for me to take on this level as well, so... Yeah, we'll try our best if we're able to actually complete certain levels for this point, but uh, as far as, you know, completion as far as I'm aware, um, well, we'll start to wait and see what happens there, especially because, well, again, this is our first time experiencing this world so far. In fact, let me know in the comments down below for the question of the day. Uh, what do you think about the fonts of World E so far in, in terms of Super Mario Advance 4, Super Mario Bros. 3? Because so far, as I said before, I was actually very impressed with how this world is going to turn out to be. I mean, sure, it might bring us some very difficult levels coming up, but either way, though, that might be a sight to behold, I guess. So, either way... Looks like you're not doing too bad, actually, for this point, Mighty. Especially concerning now you're actually pretty much used to the point where, you know, you're pretty much used to with Luigi's uh, slippery physics or higher floaty jump or here and there. But either way, though, that basically does it for this level. Now let's move on to Vegetable Frolly. Okay, that sounds kind of interesting. Now, I believe this is one of the first ever levels that we might able to come across into those special collectibles, as you mentioned earlier, Mighty. And... Is that what appears to be a very similar concept as in Super Mario Bros. 2, aka Super Mario USA? Like, you know, unplunge the actual, uh, the vegetable patches and- Oh no, the poison mushroom! Go away! Though at least unlike any forms of how it does it on, uh, Super Mario Maker 2, that, uh, it chases after you, but I've honestly have no idea why they bring the poison mushroom back. I just don't get it. But anyway, so as you can see, we actually come across into a familiar gameplay style, which appears to be based off from Super Mario Bros. 2, aka Super Mario USA. And that is, of course, um, unplug the actual weeds, and then sometimes you can either get coins, or and sometimes you're able to come across into those little tur turnips as projectiles, which I think is actually pretty cool. And something tells me we got ourselves these little jerk off uh, charging trucks to return. So because of that, though, ever since in Super Mario World, so because of that, though, and I believe they're going to be a lot more aggressive in this game, especially concerning about the fact that we've never actually come across into something familiar with the power-ups based off from Super Mario World so far. But I'm sure we will come across into it eventually. So either way, though, let's just get rid of you. And I believe in order to able to get up there with the world... Uh, with that particular special collectible as you're on about. Well, I think something tells me I do need to make our biggest jump up there. Although, something tells me if I do end it up, like... I don't know. I have no choice but desire to able to get rid of this very annoying, aggressive, uh, chucking chuck. 
and there we go that basically does it and I need to simply just get up here and if I somehow manage to do this and oh we got ourselves the E plus coin okay that's actually pretty cool and everything so yeah, that's why I was going to be mentioned about this earlier, so either way... Oh god, this turnip is huge! Especially concerning this is obviously based off from Super Mario Advance after all, because, spoiler alert, if we get to that particular game, obviously there are rare occasions that you come across into large turnips that you can able to utilize with to toss at enemies, so... Yeah, that's actually pretty cool, I really do like this level. Although, except with those aggressive charging chucks, which I have no idea why they become so aggressive in this game. So, either way, I believe now it's my turn to take on also in the Festival Frolly as well. And I believe after they, after we're done with this level, I'm pretty sure we might as well do one more level after this. Because I think that uh, certain levels, well, some of them are pretty short, and then some of them might actually feel a bit extremely lengthy at this point. Especially concerning about the fact that I believe something tells me that we will come across into a ghost house level. So, a bit of a familiar trend. Ever since in Super Mario World, or Super Mario Advance 2, Super Mario World. So, either way though, that's, this is pretty cool. And especially noticeable about the fact that you can now get power-ups while simply utilizing the Super Mario Bros. 2 gameplay style with that particular using uh, turnips and tossing at enemies and all that stuff, which is a pretty cool concept. So yeah, it's gonna have to avoid that poison mushroom because just like in uh, the last levels, basically if you dare touch the poison mushroom, then you simply get hurt, so... And obviously I don't need to worry about grabbing those advanced coins again, because obviously you've already, uh, completed that particular task, haven't you? Yep, exactly. So, either way, um, oh jeez, that was close for you. Yeah, especially I don't want to die right there. Oh god. Especially from close calls like that will happen. However though, there's the only thing you might as well realize is that I don't think you're able to actually access to a spin jump or anything, so... Unlike in Super Mario World, that you can do that, so... There we go, that basically does it for uh, Vegetable Frolly, and I believe something tells me that we actually did done the first page, uh, in terms of the forms of World E so far. Well, before we uh, continue things on, on the other hand, well, there was actually a special castle we can able to explore. That is about the fact that something tells me that, remember these uh, E plus coins that we've actually did manage to gather? Well, at least we already collected one anyway. It actually shows the symbol representing the mushroom, as you can see. And I believe we do need to collect all of them for certain stages, because you probably already know what that means, do you? Yep, meaning about the fact that as soon as we're able to come across into one, in certain stages, that we need to keep an eye on the forms of the surroundings, and on top of that, uh, when you get to the level selection right there, basically about the fact that there's actually another outline that features the actual tiny circle, which actually represents that the E-coin must be located, so... Yeah, it's actually kind of similar to the forms of Fairy Dust L, not only for the advanced coins from the likes of Super Mario Advance 1, but also with the obtaining the dinosaur coins from the likes of the forms of Super Mario Advance 2, Super Mario World, despite the fact that you don't get anything rewarding, aside from that particular perfect congratulations screen, and that's pretty much about it, uh, for what I've heard anyway, but I think in this particular game, it might do the same trend. So because of that though, yeah, we figure it might as well do one more level for the time being, so either way though, because chances are that this particular part is actually getting a bit sh shorter as far as I'm aware, so either way though, let's just dive right into the next page of the Forms of World E, that is of course page 2, and we can pretty much expect that we will be able to actually just do like well complete certain stuff as much as we can and i believe there are a grand total of like e um well in terms of how many e coins we will be getting uh there are about eight of them so hopefully we'll try to get them all as much as we can so either way now it's my turn to take on the next level in terms of the forms of world e as far as continued progression goes Although I do apologize if my karma take is a bit slightly iffy at this point today. So either way, doors are plenty is the next level we're going to be hopping to next. Especially concerning about the fact that I'm pretty sure we're almost at the halfway point uh, in terms of World E. Well, keep in mind about the fact that when it comes to certain levels coming up, sometimes it can be either be lengthier or a bit shorter depending on certain preferences, I guess. 
But uh, anywho, so now we get on to the forms of Doors of Plenty, of course. And something tells me about the fact that obviously this is a ghost house level, so... I think the background music sounds familiar, doesn't it? Yep, it's almost like entirely based off from Super Mario World. Yeah, because of all that familiar... Uh, sounds they're gonna be putting up with, and of course, I believe something tells me we will come across into a boss fight by the end of this particular level, and it's almost like a puzzle-like level, so of course, uh, before I get into the main, uh, progressioning of this level, I do need to grab, um, some advanced coins first, so either way, what's cool about this is, is that we can able to hold the key, and then entering the door at the same time, so just to ensure that you won't be able to be losing the key at any point. So, yeah, it feels kind of reminds me like I was playing Mario vs. Donkey Kong all over again, except with no, um, you know, um, backflip, or, uh, no, um, uh, handstand, or just double jumps in general, or even especially noticeable, just potentially with the actual, like, well, you know what I'm saying. I believe something tells me I do need to get down here somehow. Oh, speaker of such, there's another advanced coin just over there. So I believe in this level does feature about roughly five advanced coins in order able to proceed for this point. Oh god, that sound effect sounds familiar too. Wait, I believe we did activate the coin snake and there's the E coin right there. So I must get to it fast because I think I activated the P switch or something like that. So, hopefully, I somehow made it. So let's see what symbol does it contain. A super leaf. Thank you very much. And every time you grab yourselves the, uh, the E coin, Mario or Luigi will say, Thank you very much. And that's pretty much about it, basically. Oh, and by the way, also I forgot to mention about is about the fact that I'm presuming we've only got about 12 days to go until uh, Frozen, the actual Disney animated film, will eventually become 10 years old. Now, apparently though, about the fact that one thing I did not expect, that that was back in during the events of in March during that time, that um, for whatever reason, the UK version of the 10th anniversary of the release of Frozen just shows up way earlier in ODN, despite the fact that in the UK version doesn't seem to get the film on the theatres until uh, the 6th of December. So either way, I obviously have no idea why I've managed to be able to questioning that. But either way, and I believe something tells me there might be uh, the last uh, advanced coin somewhere. There it is. <laughs> It doesn't take that long to be able to actually figure this out. And either way, I somehow managed to find my way to the boss itself. Which, of course, you might be too familiar with this boss if you ever played Super Mario World before. That's what appears to be body forms of the Big Boo. So, as far as the battle itself, it plays very similar to the ones in Super Mario World. Except the noticeable differences this time, you don't have actually access to spin jumps. That means about the fact that, and on top of that, no checkpoints at all, just like in Super Mario World Ghost House levels. So, either way, there goes the Big Boo. But of course, you don't want to able to get rid of those uh, light blue blocks, because otherwise you create a bottomless pit, and if you accidentally fall off, then you have to start all over again for the entire level, including trying to get those, you know, those advanced coins again. And I believe say applies with their E coin as well. So, either way, now it's your turn, Mighty, to take on this level, and you somehow die by complete accident due to the forms of the high jump that you did pull off. Yeah, that's probably my fault, especially because I did not expect of what I accidentally run into earlier, so... Yeah, I think we'll pretty much get to do this level, and then eventually we'll end off the video for that point. So, if I kind of think about it, for that particular uh, World E, it does kind of remind me of something related to DLC for future games. Specifically, something related to Sonic the Hedgehog, where they basically got, you know what I mean, DLC for the likes of Sonic 06, and Sonic Unleashed, as well as uh, Sonic Lost World, well, only, uh, well, let's just say th uh, three DLC zones, which are Nightmare Zone, and Yoshi's Island Zone, and The Legend of Zelda Zone, despite the fact that you can no longer get those anymore, which is a bit sad, honestly, because, well, again, if you, if you, those of you ever missed out on Sonic Lost World on the Wii U, there was no way you can able to actually get those zones anymore, so... Well, assuming, of course, luckily you do able to actually access to the update patch, 
that uh, you don't need to necessarily worry about the frustration game over screen and long last. So because of that though, because, you know, back in Evolve's event 10 years ago, the game is very stingy on extra lives, for I've realized. But I'm sure that uh, somebody else out there, for those of you who ever watched our Let's Plays of Castlevania games, know exactly what they're talking about. So either way, so yeah, that's just pretty much as far as I can uh, discuss at this point today, folks. I would like to be able to actually mention something else for this matter, but I think I should probably save that conversation until, let's just say, the next couple of days or something like that. That, don't you think? Yeah, while well, I was busy just trying to able to fight the big boo himself, so... But, yeah, you should be able to take him down, no problem. So, with that being said, we got the ending off this point right here. So, join us next time for more Flight's Play of Super Mario Events 4, Super Mario Bros. 3. And that is about the fact that we'll continue exploring for the rest of World E to grab some more advanced coins and experience more levels. So, we'll see you guys next time. Later, fellas. See you dudes later.